Hello to all my viewers. This is Dr. Dawal Mehta. And today we will discuss common method bias using marker variable. Common method bias can occur when both the independent and dependent variables are measured within one survey using the same response method. Indeed, this is very often the case and thus there have been extensive discussion in various research fields on how to recognize, avoid and control for common method bias. The presence of common method bias can lead to spurious relationship between variables and result in inflated or distorted findings. It can undermine the validity and reliability of research outcomes. Let's take one example of what is common method bias. Let's say participants who generally have a positive attitude towards fruit tend to rate taste, appearance and nutritional value higher for all fruits regardless of the specific characteristics of each fruit. The common positive bias and responses can create a misleading impression of stronger relationship among the measured variable, that is, taste, appearance, nutritional value. So, it will indicate that there exists a very strong relationship among them than what actually exists. As a result, the same analysis may overestimate the impact of this variable on fruit preference leading to the bias conclusions. Common method bias can contribute to the presence of common method variance. Biases introduced by the measurement or assessment method can potentially inflate the correlations or relationships observed among the variables, thus amplifying the common method variance in the data. The goal of testing for common method variance is to determine to what degree any such biases exist. We describe three frequently used techniques to estimate common method variance. The first one is the Hermann single factor. Second, common Leiden factor. Both these techniques we have discussed in the previous video. Kindly refer it. Third one is the common marker variable which we are going to discuss today. I will request all my viewers to kindly refer my previous video to understand the flow of this lecture series. There is one paper titled A Tale of Three Perspectives, examining the post hoc statistical te techniques for detection and correction, common method variance. In this paper, the authors have discussed the three set of assumptions about common method variance. The first one is common method variance does not exist. The second assumption is common method, method variance exists and has equal effects across constraints. Third assumption is common method variance exists and has unequal effects across the constructs. These are the three assumptions. Now, we will include the marker variable in our data. Make sure you collect the marker variable during the stage of the survey only. Priory. Researcher might have the prior knowledge or theoretical reason to suspect the method of data collection or other methodological factors could influence the measurement of certain variables. Second characteristics of the marker variable is measured using the same method as other variables. The marker variable is typically measured using the same research methods, example same scale, same research format as other variables in the study. This ensures that any common method bias is captured in a similar manner. Scale of Marker variable is same as the other indicator variable. Distinct from other constructs. A marker variable should be distinct from other constructs included in the study. This ensures that any correlation observed between the marker variable and other variables should be zero. Marker variable should be non-congenerate. Non-congenerate refers to a situation where items or indicators within the measurement scale or instrument do not share a common underlying factor or constraint. So, it is essential that our marker variables should be non-congenerate. Restricting the value. This we will do manually. These restrictions are intentionally imposed to enhance its, ab its ability. That is the ability of the marker variable to capture common method bias and differentiate it from the substantive constructs under the investigation. Now, let's see how we can do this in MS. First of all, we will see the marker variable. Marker variable is measured with the help of four items M1, M2, M3 and M4. The scale of all these items are same as, as the items of other constructs like responsiveness and reliability. 
So let's go in MS. Now we'll be working on five models to detect common method bias. The first model A, we are having tangibility captured with the help of four items. Reliability with the help of four items. Responsiveness, four. Assurance, four. Now we have introduced one more construct, which is a marker variable, which is captured with the help of M1 to M2, M4. We will run the model. View text. We will click on the model pin. Now we will create one Excel sheet in which we will note down C minimum upon degree, degree of freedom, degree of freedom, GFI, CFI, then RMSE. So this is, we have noted down, this model is known as confirmatory factor analysis with marker. You can see the values here, the values are same. Let's see the values. 201.116, then GFI, 0 0.912, 0 0.912, CFI, and RMC. The next model which we'll run is a B model, the baseline model, right? So we'll go in MS, we'll activate the model B. Now you can see here, that there is no difference in the model. The only thing is we have imposed some restrictions on the covariances. The covariances of marker variable with all other constructs are set to zero. You can see here zero, 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 zero. I again repeat. The covariance of the marker variable with assurance set to zero. Marker variable with responsiveness set to zero. Marker variable to reliability set to zero. Marker variable to tangibility set to zero in model B. The question arises how we can set it to zero. Quite simple. Double click on this arrow, go in the parameters and set the covariance as zero. Repeat this procedure for this, this and this. Again run the model. View text. Go in the model fit. Now note down this values and insert it here. So this is known as a baseline model. So C minimum, then degree of freedom, degree of freedom, GFI, CFI, and RMSEA has been noted down and we have, and we have entered the data here. Now we will run model C. The objective of this model is to study the impact of marker variable on loadings. Right? This p-value we will calculate later on. First, we will run the model, the model C. The objective is to study the impact of marker variable on loadings. Let's go here, model C. Now in this model, what we are doing is that, the, that on marker variable, we will be loading all the items of the different construct, which means that T1 to T4 will be connected with the marker variable, Reliability 1 to 4 will be connected to the marker variable. Responsiveness 1 to 4 will be connected to the marker variable. Assurance 1 to 4 will be connected to the marker variable. Make sure that the variance of the marker variable is set to 1. Now, let's proceed further. We have to assign the weights here. So, we want to have an equal weight for all these paths. How we can do this? It's very simple. Click on the first path, write down A. Now select all other paths with the help of this single click. One, two, three, four, five. Select all of them by doing, by repeating this procedure. Now we want to copy this path coefficient A in all these paths. So we'll activate the drag property from here. Parameter constraints. Now you select A from here and you will get a small square here. When you get a small square here, drag it onto the another arrow and it will copy all the A 
on all other paths. So we will get an equal regression weights for all these paths. Now run the model. View the text. Click on the model fit. So we are having C minimum, GFI, CFI. So kindly note down this figure C minimum, GFI, CFI and RMSA in the Excel sheet. So here is it, model C. Now we will be running model U. Again, we will go in MS. Model U. Now, the regression weights which were assigned, that is, that is equal regression weights A, which were assigned to all these paths, we will remove this restriction from all these paths. So, double click on it and you will remove the regression weights from here. Right now, make sure the 0, 0, 0, the covariance is also active. Again, you run the model. View the text. Go in the model fit. Again, note down the values. C minimum, GFI, CFI, RMSC, and enter the values here. U model. The objective of this model is to study markers variable in equal impact on loadings. Now comes the last model. I'll activate the last model, model R. Now in this model, we will be entering the correlation of model A here. We will be entering the correlation of model A here. Now click on the model A run the model and press the up arrow you can see here we are having the values 0 0.17 0 0.36 0 0.04 0 0.63 0 0.30 i'll be not be talking about these values 1 2 3 4 as they are set to zeros i am talking about the values of the covariance among the constructs which are not with the marker variable so tangibility with reliability its value tangibility with responsiveness its value tangibility with assurance its value now take note down these values and impose this restriction in model r how you can enter these values double click on this arrow and enter the covariance value here then again click on it this and enter this value that is the covariance between reliability and responsiveness. Similarly, you can click here and enter the value. These are the values which I we got from model A. Again, run the model. Now, view the text. Model fit. Note down these values. Say minimum, GFI, CFI, and RMC. So, the objective of this is, model is to study markers variable impact on correlation among the constructs now which model is better the model with less value of c minimum is always better now we will have to detect that we are having a common method bias or not so we will have to generate the p-value how can i generate it so the chi-square distribution we are comparing with the baseline b3 minus b4 c3 minus c4 so you can see here the chi-square distribution into round bracket absolute b3 minus b4 comma absolute c3 minus c4 i got the p value so here 5.44 e raised to minus 26 it means that the p value is very much less than 0 0.05 what is the decision criteria if p value is more than 0 0.05 then no common method bias and if p-value is less than 0 0.05 then common method bias present so here p-value less than 0 0.05 common method bias present now we will calculate for this what's the formula now we are comparing uh, b4 minus b5 c4 minus c5 you can see here so the chi-square distribution round bracket absolute b4 minus b5 comma absolute c4 minus c5 
as this p value is less than 0 0.05 we can say common method bias present on all items are not equal second now comes the third one the p value for the third one so here we will take the difference of this two and this two so chi square distribution into round bracket absolute b5 minus b6 c5 minus c6 so the p value is less than 0 0.05 and as it is less than 0 0.05 we will say that that common method bias is present so this was all about common method bias using the marker variable for more videos on SPSS, I must kindly subscribe to my channel. You can see my playlist in which I already uploaded many videos on SPSS MS. You can also follow me on LinkedIn and Twitter. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and press the like button.